Hey yo guys and welcome back to episode 9 of Higurashi. Now if we follow our usual patterns of how Higurashi goes down considering what went down in last week's episode, I do believe this episode will be a kind of fresh take, you know, a fresh reset where we'll focus on a new character where I believe it will be of Satoko and her kind of journey. I do feel like this episode is going to be really relaxed and sweet as the traditions of Higurashi's first kind of introductory episode so I'm expecting to be kind of hearted and smiling a lot more but who knows so without further ado let us jump on the ride that is Higurashi. If you guys want to watch full anime make sure to check out the link above or also stand the video in three two one go. I think it's gonna start off quite dramatically to kind of like you know bait us in but oh this is a new house Oh, that's a bit messy. It's not one of our girls. Does it sound like one of our girls? <gasps> Aren't you the guy in the ending? Prescription Tepi Hojo. Tepi, I wonder what that was. June 9th, 1983. Who was that? A new character. Fascinating. Damn. Leftover lunch boxes are always the best. Well, she did bring you a lunchbox last time. Just say. <gasps> That's adorable. That looks good. That looks good. That looks good. Yeah, nice serving of meat right there. Yes. Or oh, can you? Yeah, and cauliflower. Oh. Don't make her cry over that. Oh. No. I don't think he, she is good at cooking. Okay, yeah, we're definitely gonna focus on Satoko. Yeah, you've had all the girls make you a bento. I'm excited for this because I think like <laughs> I love how she claps. Ooh. Hey, everything worked out. <laughs> you got so screwed over. I was thinking, isn't technically these events was when Raina came over. Go with something simple. I can tell. How do you not know what a teaspoon is? <laughs> oh 
shit. Where did she come out of? I love how she just flying kicked. That fan is top tier fan. What is happening there? She just saved your ass, mate. Oh. It would go, it would go whoosh whoosh and wee wee. <laughs> I don't think so. Why is there a whisk? Why is everything broken? <laughs> so that actually looks really mature. Or feels really mature. Ooh. Damn, look at them, look at them chop 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 skills. You tell her. Is is this already the dinner episode? No no no. This is She hasn't done this in a while. She had a big brother. Satoshi. Fascinating how we get introduced to a lot more family members. Oh, is he no longer with us? Is he a victim of the curse? I guess that's something we'll dive more into. I don't know that side to Satoko. This is nice, do I dare say. Yeah, I was wrong about you two as well. It's still very impressive. And it's a thought that counts. Because, yeah, if you guys didn't come in time, we would have a whoosh whoosh and a wee wee. <laughs> She gets a big stamp of approval. Why bring that up, sweetie? Oh, what he's doing right now? So like, he's just away? Big brother, oh, Nini. He ran away from home. How could you, how, why did he, A, why did he run away, and then B, if they were so close, why did he run away without Satoko? <laughs> Nini, that's so cute. Oh, I didn't know there was the side to Satoko. I always thought she was just like really cheeky and mischievous with all her pranks. Goo goo, nya nya. <laughs> but yeah, there's a lot more of like a um mature vibe to her. Just like the fact that it seemed like she was kind of looking after Keiichi in this episode. Just like she, I feel like, did um. Round of applause. Maybe Rika this time is trying to... Interesting. Mm, KJK. 
Lolly, lolly, gaggy. Okay. <laughs> What's that even mean? Okay, okay, interesting. I'm just going to quickly throw that. I feel like Rika this time is definitely, this is definitely like Sato Ko's like timeline, you know, like, um. So I feel like Rika is trying to make sure that this time, you know, Sato Ko doesn't go batshit crazy. And the first, it's the first time she actually gave Keichi praise for his actions. So maybe if we... Yeah, because I feel like Rika was the one that kind of set up this whole kind of situation. Absolutely scrumptious. Oh, I don't know. Satoko just needed head pads. Yeah, I thought she was just like a little bratty and like always, you know, poking fun and causing like trouble. Um, I don't know. That was the side of her. I do like how we always get to learn more about our characters. Yeah, now that looks like something out of the books you're one i'm not too sure about what is with this theme of cooking reina came over to make him food shion pretending to be mion came over and gave him a bento <gasps> Did she set that all up? You, you know, just as a prank that. Well played, sweetie. Well played. Oh, yeah, you're an only child, so this must be really fun. There's definitely an uneasiness throughout the episodes, though. No! No! <laughs> Reina? Win a fight? Surely not. Not already. No, 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 no. No, the, mu the music's too funny. The music's too funny. I think we'll be good. I think it'll just be like a game fight. Golf club is a good choice of weapon, though, I will say. Do approve. Or a baseball bat. You're just like an older brother. Oh, maybe wrong choice of weapon. This is awkward. What is going on? Oh, is this for a baseball game? He's so embarrassed. Just imagine running into a baseball game of a golf club. <laughs> Sure. Why did I bring a golf club? Yeah, you could have added a little bit more detail to that. Damn, home run? Solid. Absolutely solid. You what, what, how, how did you have time to go all the way? Poor. What's the deal? What did you guys get up to? <gasps> Big barbecue! Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> Rika's so painted. 
like patronizing someone. <laughs> I will say it was an absolute stellar performance. Did not know that. I love her laugh. I honestly love her little laugh. Idiot. Coach. We'll just call you coach. You do like her a lot. How? Don't know how I feel about that one. Isn't she like... Oh, interesting. Could have played with us a little longer. Mm. Why did he leave? A series of unfortunate events. Three years ago. And two of them support one another. Oh, she's living. It's just that would prevent me from adopting that. <laughs> this this guy gives me a little bit creepy vibes, but I do think his attentions are good. I don't know if Satoko was a... You'll never make her cry. Why are there so many legal complications? Is my question. Oh my god, who just said that, Shion? This person is a person of culture. <gasps> no, it's... Mm. Oh, this is so messy with me. When did you suddenly pop out of? Oh, you're the manager. I'm a fan, the manager. That's true. It would be Xion to say all of those things because Mian would be too shy to. Big sister. <laughs> Nene. Oh. Yeah, no, I do agree, but, but. We can't always just be all smiles and happiness. That's true. Yeah, that's a bit odd. Yeah, to go... Nipa! You're so cheeky, Rika. You're so cheeky. Oh, we're getting straight into it. It was Satoshi. They they said it was last year was Satoshi. 
<gasps> no. 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 <gasps> this is this is exactly like the scene in episode like two or three. Mm-mm. No. Meow's yeah, alright. Don't change the time. Sweetie, don't do this. Don't do this. Interesting. I don't feel like the brother would leave Satoko though. Oh, the damn project again. Oh. I mean, that makes sense. Oh, the festival of Tsuoyashi. Oh, fuck. Well, because they were pro dam project. She's so young. Interesting, this time it, they make it seem as though they're not talking about it for the sake of Satoko. And I can kind of understand that. But we constantly hear the cicadas cry, I wonder. This was only episode one. Who are you? Why? Uncle! Uncle! This is the motherfucker! Where the fuck is this? This is the mo- I've never- Ever in my life disliked a character so instant No, 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 I probably have because, yeah. But no, oh my lord, this person just gave me vibes that I was not liking from the start, kind of see. And then obviously this ending scene, I thought episode one. Now episode one normally always leaves us on a juicy ass cliffhanger. And this is what they've done to us. Where did he just, where did this uncle, Teppi? Teppi? Was that his motherfucking name? Where was he leading Satoko into? And obviously it, she didn't seem like she... He was eager to get in there. Um, so she's definitely doing this because of like her uncle's um, command. So I guess the question I bring up is, fuck, I knew it. I knew I saw that colorful ass t-shirt in this ending here. I, that's what instantaneously the moment I saw that shirt, I was just like, fuck this dude. Honestly, fuck this dude. Because like, I, um, yeah, no, no. This is one character of Higashi where I'm just gonna say you can die. You could, I know it's only first impressions, but no, it, it does, yeah, no, 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 no. I apologize. I got a little heated in the moment there because I never knew I could dislike a character so much, but yeah, this is definitely one character I am going to really dislike, but. Something I want to briefly touch on with this kind of reset and the timeline of us focusing on Satoko, I want to definitely mention how it gives off a very different vibe. And what I mean by that is if the previous two kind of, I'll call them like timeline arcs, were about kind of like hiding the Oyashiro curse and like no one really wanting to talk about it because of like the whole like split between the villages, the history of being like demoned away and then and all the people from like Himazari village technically having like that demon bloodline. And what I'm getting at is if the previous two like timeline arcs were more focused on like that mystical side of things, like I feel like this one actually focuses on a more realistic kind of topic of actually not wanting to bring it up to protect Satoko. And I can totally understand that. And that's why I'm saying it gives off a really different vibe. Like even though we saw um Ray Raina there kind of towards the ending, you know, um, once Keiichi asked about the curse, have that like iconic kind of dark look. 
going on. Mia was still like, hey, you know, like, let's go read manga. And then she still kind of explained it to Keiichi. That's what kind of caught me off guard, you know. I thought instantaneously both of them were going to go into that dark mood and just be like, you know, let's not talk about it, Keiichi. But I was really surprised that after, like, Mia sent away Reina, she actually, like, sat Keiichi down and kind of, kind of explained the situation and how, like, Satoko's um, parents were actually, like, the pro dam project, which was something we haven't heard of before. We always thought that the people of the village were all against it, like, all purely against it. But it really caught me off guard to firstly hear that there was actually, like, people that were for the project. And I think continue with that idea, I'm going to definitely say that I think there are villages that are carrying out, like, the traditions of the curse. And that is something that, you know, with the me and Shion arc, we did kind of explore that idea that it might actually be the people that are carrying out the curse. Because obviously, if we go with the traditions of, like, the Himazawi village, they would have definitely been against the project. So considering that they took out the leaders of, like, the pro dam project, I just find that very, like, interesting. I don't think it's just, like, you know, a curse kind of going on. It's definitely, like, a tradition that they are using and following whilst using the excuse of the curse. So I think that is definitely, like, a food for thought we need to keep in the back of our minds. The fact that the leaders of the, like, pro dam project were, like, killed can't just be a coincidence. And I guess leaning from that kind of idea, did Satoko's brother of Satoshi actually run away or was he also like kind of cursed away because I just think that if like Satoshi had that much of a close relationship with Satoko like they seem like so far that they had a really like kind of tight and close relationship I don't think he would have run away like on his own I feel like he would have taken um, Satoko with him considering um, why I also say that is because I feel like the legal complications the coach kind of brought up I feel like that involves the uncle yeah I feel like the uncle definitely is involved in something that is making things like legally complicated and that's why I also bring up the question of like did Satoshi actually run away because of the whole situation with the uncle because so far you know uncle ain't giving me good vibes and the fact that we saw that kind of ending where he was taking Satoko to some like building I don't know it just gave me vibes that you know I am not comfortable with and, and that's why I bring up like I don't feel like Satoshi would have left Satoko in that kind of environment and so that's why did he run away did he get cursed away who knows so yeah this is quite a fascinating arc I feel like we're going to dive into because I don't think it's just going to be purely about the curse I feel like as I was mentioning like the vibe that they're giving off is just very different I feel like this arc is more so going to be about like protecting Satoko whilst also exploring the curse but I feel like it's just going to be a much more like realistically dark one like if, if the other ones were more about like dealing with this kind of curse figure that was untangible I feel like this one there is actually like a demon that we're looking at and it is tangible and I'm going to say that that demon is the uncle so yeah that's what I mean by the vibe is a lot more different and it just feels like a lot more realistic and dark so I feel like this is definitely going to be an arc where it's just going to be like protect Satoko definitely protect her so yeah I guess on that note I am really quite excited to explore Satoko as a character herself so I guess until then make sure you guys stay awesome and I'll definitely catch you guys next time